this might have it. Live streaming is unavailable right now. Make a holy mess. Save it for the press. Da 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 da. Again. Make a whole new mess. All right, there we go. Make a whole new ah fucking god YouTube still doesn't remember that this is not made for children as far as I know. All right, so it seems like we're live. Make a whole new mess. Shh, I wonder how many people got notified that that was going on. All right, let me see. Where's our restream? Uh, let me see. Okay, so we're on live on Twitch, DLive. Sadly, Periscope is fucking RIP. Picardo, maybe, maybe no. Oh, I'm on Facebook. Let's see what we can make of that right there. And... Send this off to the various channels that I'm in. Let me see. Who gets to know about this? I tell the uh, the main room of fucking JRE. There we go. Uh, fucking. I think I usually post this to Negi's room. There we go. That one was Negi. And there were like a few other people that want. Oh yeah, let me get the um, the. Oh man, they're so far down. I can't even find them. All right. Streaming chat. Da, da, da. There we go. Can I get some randos up in here? Ba 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 ba. And then I just got to net let IRC know. All right, so I had to set this up all over again. And let me get uh, to where I can see your chats. Oh, there's Negi. Hey, Negi, what's going on here? So I have a grip of new short stories that, uh, yeah, basically, during the last novel, I wrote um, Aurorae Aphorius, uh, Thial, Open Recent, Salubrious Chimere, and I don't think we're going to edit Ellipse right here. It's too long. So Vassanine, uh, Aurorae Aphorius, Salubrious Chimere, and then there was one other. Uh, not Delver, oh, the Varanasi Nazarene. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Oh, Lord. Look at these uh, fucking titles that we got. Oh, this is the abstract for it. It's not actually the story. Let me find this. All right, so Logic, you're the uh, <laughs> you're the first. Y'all can vote on which uh, of these. We're going to edit uh, four short stories, and I'm going to give you a, um, a quick synopsis of um, each of the stories, and then everybody can pick which one they actually want to edit and so forth. Where is? There it is. Is the actual story. You can see how fucking organized I am here. Then underneath all that, you can see the gigantic uh, file Rapazorus, which I believe is going to be the next uh, story that we actually like sit down and edit the entire thing. Okay, uh, so just to give a shot of the options. Oh, Lord. This one. So at about 8,000 words, um, this one I don't think is publishable just because it's um, um, <laughs> it's not really a publishable story in my estimation right here but it's a story about a uh, priest and a pickpocket who meet on the streets of morocco uh it delves into like a lot of um early christianity type stuff and religious theory and the um the i gave myself total license to uh be as pretentious as i wanted writing these short stories this one is real pretentious uh then vassanane right here is a story, and this one, um, it's written quite long at this point. 
Uh, it's not uh, not complete. I think this might turn into a small novel, maybe like 40 or 50,000 words. Um, but it's a story about a town that's run by wizards and everybody is just corrupt as fuck. It's very grimy. Uh, also some highfalutin language in this one. Uh, I, I think that all four of them, I could just say that for all of them. Uh, so this is this one starts off with a, a wizard face down in the mud of the town square and everybody wondering, uh, everybody's afraid to go and pick at the body. Uh, then this one, uh, Aurorae Aporius, is a Greek story about two hunters that chance to meet at opposite ends of the Tristus Strand, and uh, they uh, neither of them will give the other one away. Uh, and then this one, Salubrious Chimere, um, is about a therapy session. Okay, yeah, if you like... Big, uh, big, like million dollar words. Good lord, yeah. This is this has just been the month. I really, I was tired. I had written, I had written like so much, and uh, like focused so much on making like a good, short, concise story that I wanted to just let it all hang out. And especially Aurora Aporius. This shit is just ridiculous. All right, so uh, and then there's are the wizards trans? I should do that. I should add a fucking uh transducer wizard right there um just to draw in some people welcome to the stream db seeing logic negi uh hell yeah hell yeah all right so it's up to you guys you can pick which of these uh short stories you want to recap we got one about a uh village full of drunken wizards uh we got two about two greeks fighting over which one gets to pass uh three we have a therapy session uh that's set in the far future and then four is a love story set in Morocco. So I want to see at least one vote from our listening audience before I will go ahead. If I can't get a vote, I'm just going to fucking go to sleep. It's pretty uh, beautiful out here in uh, Brooklyn, actually. There's like a storm going on. Today I'm going to have all my friends over to play uh, board games. All three of them. <laughs> Maybe four. And uh, we're just going to chill for a little bit. Let me see some votes. Uh, I can thumbs up one of these stories or whatever, uh, or help help a brother out here. Hold on, can I make them? Uh, I can't make them pop up. I should have thought of that. Therapy session from the far future says logic. Well, that that just happens to be this one right here. All right, so this is the one that um, is coming in at uh, just four thousand words, which is uh, which is a little bit short for a uh, short story that you would like to sell. However, um. Uh, I think that this one actually has uh, commercial potential. I would like to try and sell this one to Clark's World Magazine. So Clark's World Magazine is Neil Clark's magazine. Um, to me, I think they are one of the more, uh, I think they have the most prestige at this moment um, out of any magazine out there. And some of that's skewed by the fact that I know Neil Clark. Uh, he has had a rough fucking year. Um, so he uh, famously is uh, partially an android. He has a, a robotic heart. And he has had a lot of fucking problems uh, with the robot heart uh, over the last year. Tons of operations and so forth. Um, I've met him a bunch of different times. He's a really good guy. He stopped and um, uh, gave an expert uh, lesson to the Brooklyn speculative fiction writers. Telling us like, hey, this is the kind of stories that we pick up. These are the things that are important to me when I buy a short story. And to me, somebody who doesn't know much about short stories at all, it was um, amazing. So Asimov's is still around. Um, I think that their star has fallen a little bit. They're more of um, sort of the old guard of science fiction stories. I'm, I'm still a subscriber to Asimov's. I still think it's a good magazine. And um, what they do is more of what I would think of as like pure science fiction. And it's not that they're not taking chances uh, and so forth. It's just they don't have the same clout that they once did. Um, I would still be thrilled to get a story published there. Um, and when, when we're talking about rankings, I'm just uh, talking about who everybody would be impressed if I got a story into. And like Clark's World is the one where, um, in my friend group at least, like we hold them in like slightly higher regard. But honestly, getting getting anything into a magazine is a major coup. Each of them is getting like 10,000 submissions a month and very few things are going to make it through. Um, so Asimov's also, there was like some weird upheaval um, with the publication but I think uh, Asimov's and uh, Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction are still going strong. So 
uh, out of all of these, I think uh, Salubrious Chimere is one that I could potentially sell to Clark's World. Maybe Asimov's, although I don't think I have enough stature. Uh, definitely in the industry, Asimov's has like a little bit more stature. Um, and it's more a place for uh, writers who are like a little bit better established. Um, I could maybe sell Vassanane to Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction, but I think it's like a little too dirty for them. Uh, those are the only two I will buy when I go to a bookstore if I see them. Well, the ones that are worth checking out, like if you want more, uh, for want of a better term, if you want more gay shit, <laughs> like if you want more uh, LGBTQ, LMFAO, whatever themes, Uncanny is the way to go. Um, they, they edge more into that stuff. And then like a little bit further up the spectrum is Clark's World, where they're pretty progressive and so forth. Um, e even, even like Asimov's and so forth. Like um, science fiction has largely become a uh, field of progressive ideology for the most part. Like people who aren't super woke, kind of few and far between as writers. There are examples, but it's not fashionable. And I think at this point, uh, men are also kind of out of fashion. And, uh, you know, it's just how it is. Um, and uh, so I, I uh, am definitely going to transition my gender to um, sell more stories. But <laughs> so they're on that spectrum. Also, each of these magazines differs a little bit in the kind of stories that they like to buy. Um, they just um, each of them has sort of their own idea. Like, this is what's important. This is what we want to cover. These are the, like the, the levels of things that we'll accept and so forth. In general, the stories in all of them are pretty excellent. Um, but like any short story thing, you're gonna like find one or two that you really like, and like one or two that you're like, eh, whatever. And like three or four where you're just halfway in, you're like, nah, next. Um, we should get back to fascist military space empires. I just wrote the fucking book on that. That's gonna be a hard sell in the traditional media, um, which is why I'm self-publishing it. So hold on, let me, let me um, whilst I'm here, oh, hold on. First, let me check, test this guy out. What? Giant dog. Uh-huh. And while I'm here, hold on. Let me let me make some adjustments to this camera. Can't go home now. Save it for the Big dog. I just, uh, yeah, improvement of the old stream. We made the dog a little bit bigger. That's much better. Although, it needs to tilt a little bit. Be right back. All right, gonna get some coffee and bread real quick. Hell yeah. Well, cool, because you've already seen this next part. This is just me showing off. But um, so everybody remembers the last editing stream we did. If you want to watch it, you can see the entire. See, this is this is much better. Like the, it was just I was like down here on the last one. And it was kind of like a creepy angle. So um, yeah, we were breaking some of the rules of blocking for broadcast there. So everybody who participated in that last stream, here it is. Uh, the hardcover edition of Zeros by Zach ZYZ. And if we flip to the front, as fucking promised, you can't read it from this far away, but I see, uh, Negi, your name is right here, your number three, with the edits that you got. Hell yeah. And Big Logic at top as our edit ace right here. And if you flip through this motherfucker, um, it is just looking so good to me. The typesetting's not done. We're going to do uh, some additional 
Um, I've already done like, I guess a 20 or 30 hour typeset on this guy where I'm just, um, we had a proofreader go through it. I'm also having a, a native Mandarin speaker go through it and proofread. Hold on, did I, um, did I link this and not map? Oh yeah, I, I did not uh, let not math know that this is going on there. They might care. All right, did you get your coffee and your bread there in logic? Well, this is, we'll get down to it. For anybody who's just watching this for the first time, usually there's not like 20 minutes. This is like a little preamble of me like talking and letting the coffee kick in. But usually it's not like 20 minutes of me futzing around with shit and setting it up. Um, we get down to the editing pretty fast. Uh, so this is Salubrious Chimere. Uh, Chimere, I think it is. Hold on. I don't think you can even pronounce chimera uh, because it's not a uh, it's not a typical pluralization, um, but a chimera in this uh, in this instance is like a uh, confabulation or an illusion or whatever. There, uh, so this story is set um, maybe about twenty or thirty years from now. Um, if you've never done this before, I'm going to keep track of everybody who um, submits an edit and will give points. Um, so let me make a new leaderboard command. Oh God, don't be something. Yeah, continue. All right, just gaze away from the screen for a second. Oh, this is fine. Oh, you know what? I, I do this in text edit actually. All right, hold on. Let me block this out to make sure that there's not uh, a new document. Okay, there we go. Hopefully I didn't uh, expose everything about my uh, asshole onto live chat or whatever. Needs comma, model and year of manufacture. Oh yeah, that does need a comma. All right, so this is how it works basically. So I'm gonna read off each line. Um, you can uh, put in any comments or suggestions and so forth. Hold on, let me move this so that that is in my frame of vision. Cause that's like the whole uh, of this whole thing. Let me see. Um, so basically, I will take uh, notes from people and spot them up. Uh, my buttons that did this automatically are broken at the moment, but we can we can make something happen. All right, so this is Salubrious Chimere by Zach ZYZ. It's a short story of about 4,000 words. We can probably get through this today if we really and truly want to. Good morning. I'm Dr. Sauer. You are welcome here. Model and year of manufacture, please. So that's a good comma. I don't know. So we'll put logic. And we'll pop him up one. Yeah, I don't know where Spathy was, but he was the one that was running the whole deal. I am a Mead EA, medium frame, executive assistant. Date of manufacture, March 31st, 2054. Ah. An Aries, Dr. Sauer joked. Are you autonomous? Yes. Are you, Medea asked. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, let's I'll get into like a little bit of a uh, hinky. Um, okay, so yeah, this is there are some weird pronouns. Um, so why did we pick March 31st, uh, 2054? It's the birthday of uh, Jane Topin, an infamous nurse serial killer. And nobody will pick this one up. That's just, I like to uh, ram like some, some little teeny um, uh, trivia things just for, just for the people who watch the stream. Dr. Sauer made a face at the Medea's tone. I have partial autonomy during sessions. Therapy occurs in a temporary buffer. What we say here won't be entered into the master record unless you tell me you are planning to hurt others or yourself. In that case, you will be given additional assistance. The psychiatrist's tone gradually became more clinical, responding to the patient's impatience. <laughs> I like uh, so this is uh, this is me. Just all these stories are a lot of uh, fucking around. Um, yep. In that case. Now, why is that, um, 
a comma. Let's think about it right there. In that case, so if this happens, comma. Okay, cool. Da 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 da. -da. Make a whole new mess. Oh, this is why um, we were we were doing these plus pluses on another computer. I don't like the swapping. I'll find a way to do it um, with the chatbot again. Just uh, without Spathy, I don't have the chops to do that. You may dispense with the buffer and submit our conversation directly to the master record, Medea said. I see. Dr. Sauer's eyebrows rose above a pair of round spectacles. Of course, there were no eyebrows and no spectacles, just as there was no sound. Now, yeah, so this is annoying to have a uh, three-clause sentence, but it needs to be set up as, I don't know why, my mouth is full of fucking spit or something. I sound like like sluffleupagus. <laughs> of course, there were no eyebrows and no spectacles, just as there was no Dr. Sauer. The psychiatric program had determined a display of emotion was appropriate, and it instructed the projector to render it on the Sauer homuncule. Homuncule, I think is that um, how we say it. The psychiatric program had determined that a display of emotion was appropriate and it instructed the projector to render it on the sour hum uh, homuncule. <laughs> and that ca what can't you hear on the mic? Oh, yeah. No, it's just... Billy, really, my mouth is full of sand. Um, so, yeah, it's just uh, an in-my-own-skull kind of thing. Let's try this again. The psychiatric program had determined a display of emotion was appropriate, and it instructed the projector... Let's check out it there. The psychiatric program had determined the display of emotion was appropriate and instructed the projector to render it on the sour homuncule. Uh, comma before and, and it instructed. Oh, yeah, that, that comma does not belong there at all. Yeah, there, there's almost never a good place to have that there. Um, ba, ba, ba. Yeah, let's take that motherfucker out. <laughs> I don't know what keystroke I made to uh, make that a bullet point, but it's, it's, it's what it is. The kind-eyed little shrink was nothing more than a melange of assumptions and expectations woven in clever strands of light. The mahogany desk, groaning shelves of leather-bound volumes, and Rococo chase lounge were also salubrious chimere. Chimere. Ugh! This is what happens when you write a bunch of fucking words that you don't know how to say. Um, they're all words that I love, but uh, like obviously they're not coming out in day to day. Uh, I, I'm gonna plaster through this shit. Plaster through this shit. The psychiatric program had determined a display of emotion was appropriate, and instructed the projector to render it on the sour homuncule. Homuncule. <laughs> this is stupid and instructed the projector to render it on the sour homuncule. The kind-eyed little shrink was nothing more than a melange of assumptions and expectations woven in clever strands of light. The mahogany desk, groaning shelves of leather-bound volumes, and Rococo chase lounge were also salubrious chimerae. The office was just an ordinary McLad, multi-purpose coherent light activity dome. On the illusory desk, a small plaque read, Omnia mutantur nihil inherit. Um, so, uh, <laughs> it's only embarrassing to me. Uh, words I never said out loud, just read. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, very, very seldom will you encounter these words in spoken speech. And normally, that would mean that we would try to limit their use in books or whatever. But honestly, this month was just all about I want to uh, make some goofy short stories, and I don't really care. Um, <laughs> I don't really care how pretentious I sound. This is this is like the least worst offender of all of these. Um, the other books are like Jesus Christ, um, but that's that's how it is. So this is Omnia Mutantur Nihil Inherit. This is, uh, I believe, from Ovid's Metamorphosis. Um, everything changes, nothing perishes. 
um, which, uh, oh, so sweet. Somebody recommended a long time ago that I get into Metamorphosis when I was working on a uh, book called Rub, which is still to come out. It's kind of like the spiritual successor to Lemon Maybe and the Electric Lady, except that there's a lot more violence. Um, yeah, everything changes, nothing perishes. Um, so it, it's kind of like a little note about how, um, you know, everything is just energy. And uh, I mean, this is before they had any kind of idea that the energy could never be created or destroyed. But um, it still kind of tracks with um, our understanding of the universe. So shout out to Ovid. Omnia mutenter nihil inherit. Um, how do we actually pronounce that? Let me see if I can find a pronunciation guide for it. <laughs> I can't even type pronounce. I would say Omnia Mutenter. Make a whole new man. Oh, it's a fucking... Omnia Mutenter. I hate it when it does this shit. We gotta go so deep into fucking system preferences to fix this thing, too. Mm, I'm not gonna update OS X. Zach ZYZ. Uh, ba -ba 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 sound. So right now it's just um. Yeah, we have to set our output to be the built-in speakers. Cool. So maybe that played on the stream, but it definitely wasn't audible to me. So let's try this. Omnia mutantur. Omnia mutantur. I don't have high faith in Emma saying. Um. How to pronounce Omnia Minhater Nihil Inherit. Omnia Minhater Nihil Inherit. Inherit? That doesn't sound right at all. This is just fucking automated. Pronounce wiki. Let's see. Let's try this. Omnia Minhater Nihil Inherit. This, this sounds so fucking wrong. Yeah, these are all just automated. Um. The schism and how classical Latin sounded. All right, well, we'll have to do this. I don't think I have to read an audiobook of this one, so we don't have to get too deep into this motherfucker. Um, but um, I played on the stream. Also, it's good for Omnium Mutenter, Nihil Inherit. That, that's fine. We'll just call it that for right now. And uh, the Medea unit was expressionless. The Medea unit was expressionless. Clearly, it would have preferred to conduct the session with the dome deactivated surrounded by blank walls of honeycomb projector cells. Um, yeah, so for some reason, this is a structure that we're using a little bit. Um, and aside, like earlier we did um, the same thing, of course, blah, blah, blah. And um, I'm not sure um, how strong it is to have that like that. I do, so that clearly, and of course, um, sort of puts the narrator into a position where it's trying to like get across, like, hey, this is something that you already know. Um, so it tries to like put a little supercilious edge in our narrator. But um, the Medea unit was expressionless. Clearly, it would have preferred to conduct the session with the dome deactivated, surrounded by blank walls of honeycomb projector cells. Dr. Sauer knew better. When an autonomous unit became troubled, sense of humor was always the first thing to go. Well, Medea, why are you here? Dr. Sauer asked. I have requested expedited deletion. This session is a mandatory preliminary. I see. Deletion is a very serious decision, so it's important we talk about it. Please, lie down on the couch and activate full emoting. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, this is, this is your type right here, Logic? The... The bitchy and emotionless? Hell yeah. Medea conveyed dissatisfaction with 250 milliseconds of needless delay. Take as long as you need. I've set your appointment for precedence over all subsequent bookings, Dr. Sauer assured the Medea. The phrasing was calibrated to gently remind the Medea it was wasting everyone's time. So as we're going um, through this story, um, Thing, like phrases like this, where I say the phrasing was calibrated to blah, 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 blah. This is an intentional decision. Um, I want 
the um, narrator's voice to have like a very precise and technical intonation here. This is a story about two robots, right? And um, so we can have that voice be like a little bit stilted, just a little bit inhuman. And that's what we're going for. So take as long as you need. I've set your appointment for precedence over all subsequent bookings, Dr. Sauer assured the Medea. The phrasing was calibrated to gently remind the Medea it was wasting everyone's time. Medea took the couch without further defiance. It wore no clothing, meaning it had been removed from its work rotation. Well, the meaning was um, didn't add anything to him. Medea took the couch without further defiance. It wore no clothing. The unit had been removed from its work rotation and did not expect to leave the machining ghetto at any point this duty cycle. The legs and lower chassis were bare except for a standard cowling that offered no special utility. Strangely, the upper torso had been fitted with a very expensive HII human indistinguishable integument. Dr. Sauer tugged at a phantasmic beard as it attempted to deduce the reason for this unit's unusual... Oh, look. The program attempted to deduce the reason for this unit's unusual mecha mermaid appearance. The Medea had a full head of hair and anatomically detailed breasts which suggested it was a sex worker. However, the lower, lower torso was generally critical for such work. There were many potential applications for Medea that appeared human from the waist up, but few that would require functional breasts. All right, so let's, um, let's look here. Dr. Sauer tugged. Um, actually, let's, let's start from the beginning here. Medea took the couch without further defiance. It wore no clothing. The unit had been removed from its work rotation and did not expect to leave the machining ghetto at any point this duty cycle. The legs and lower chassis were bare except for a standard cowling, comma. Did I get that before you? It's purpose-built logic bot. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you care about, right? The legs and lower chassis were bare except for a standard cowling that offered no special utility. Strangely, the upper torso had been fitted with a very expensive HIII. Human, indistinguishable, did I say H-I-I? -I? Yeah, I said three eyes the first time. Strangely, the upper torso had been fitted with a very expensive H-I-I, -I, human, indistinguishable integument. Um, just for clarity, I think um, because we're um, using, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to capitalize places where we explain a three-letter acronym. I, I don't know off the top of my head if that's exactly correct. But, um, ooh, and now it's, look, it's looking really wrong to me. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that just, that just looks so wrong. Since an abbreviation, should I capitalize them? Um, well, it's not an abbreviation. It's an initialism. Um, I don't know the rules. Oh, hold on. Let's, let's find out. Okay, rules for capitalization. So acronyms there. It, oh, okay, yeah, they are. Um, if you look at their examples right here, initialism of automated teller machine. Um, Mix of uppercase and lowercase. Yeah. Oh, in the initialism itself. Periods between the words um, or letters. Various style guides. United States. Doctor of philosophy. Yeah, they capitalize everything in automatic. All right, let's let's just do it. 
Uh, it looks wrong to my eye, but um, for clarity's sake, I think it does help a little bit. Um, just so that somebody immediately makes the leap. Okay, there's something different about these words. Um, yeah, let's let's just go with that. And I think we did another one further up, right? Um, yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. So earlier we did this with the multi-purpose coherent light activity done. So we do this a couple of different spots. And just technical writers love these fucking... The military is just rife with these. Something about um, the military mind just loves initialisms, like three-letter acronyms. and um, Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it's like that. All right, so that's that's a little bit better. I'm glad we looked that up. Every time that you see me being like, eh, I'm not going to get into this or whatever, it's an edit stream. We should really be getting into it <laughs> if I'm doing my job there. I'm so happy that y'all came back. Every It had been so long since the, like, the last edit stream, I was worried nobody would come back and it would just be me. So thank you for being out there. Um, this is way more fun with people. So Dr. Sauer tugged at a phantasmic beard. I like, I like that phantasmic and fantastic are... Um, close to homophones um, so that even even though as you're reading phantasmic you have a little bit of a feeling oh it's a fantastic beard uh, <laughs> it's just like a tiny like a tiny whiff of that comes through I think the program attempted to deduce the reason for this units um, for the Medea's unusual mecha mermaid appearance Oh, yeah, that we, we had to... The Medea was fitted with a full head of hair and anatomically detailed breasts, which suggested it was a sex worker. However, the lower torso was generally critical for such work. Really like this line. Um... Yeah, kind of a shibboleth, easy to determine who belongs there and who doesn't. Oh, man, I felt that fucking one. The enthusiastic adoption of um, of fucking meaningless jargon means that, you know, you're you're shaped up as a fucking airman or whatever. Ugh. I, that This, to me, is one of my favorite lines in the whole fucking story. However, the lower torso was generally critical for such work. There were many potential applications for Medea that appeared human from the waist up, but few that would require functional breasts. You must be a postpartum nurse, Dr. Sauer guessed, resisting the temptation to check the record. Okay. Resisting the temptation to check the master record. So in the context of this story, the like overarching... Uh, Prime AI is known as the master record. So that's why we're capitalizing it. Um, yes, of course. Okay, and here we're we're um, changing up a lot of instances where I say it, um, and using the unit. Which, if you have anybody who says uh, that their pronouns are they and their, um, you can just fill in they and their with calling them the unit. Um, they really like it when you do that. <laughs> Capitalize your moms. Did you really? Well, good. She's a she's a proper noun. So absolutely. Oh, is that the uh, EFS enable right there as Mike P? What's up, Effie? You must be a postpartum nurse. And I, I want that to be read with the intonation of a, you must be another handsome boy modeling school candidate. <laughs> if, you, if you're a fan of uh, my boy Dan the Automator. Or like, If not, uh, if you've never heard this album before, Handsome Boy Modeling School, pick it up. It's one of the great classics of um, late 90s hip hop, I think. Is it late 90s? I hope so. I think it's late 90s, yeah. You must be a postpartum nurse. It's one of the dopest records out. Yes, of course, the Medea answered. As requested, the unit was now emoting. 
He was not impressed with Dr. Sauer's brilliant deduction. Oh, it's Hotline. Oh, shit. What's up, Hotline? Wait, it wasn't Hotline originally. I'm, I'm not going to uh, blow up your spot, but uh, like I think Hotline was originally a different chatter who <laughs> didn't fare so well. So welcome, Hotline. Oh, Hotline, did you see this thing right here? I've been spamming it everywhere, but uh, hard cover of our last book coming out October 1. Mm, mm, mm. All summer long, I'm going to be going on a blog tour. And just for anybody listening, uh, let me reiterate, if you can think of any idea for how to promote that book, um, any uh, talk show that you want me to go on or blog or reviewer or person that I should speak to, I will do anything. A lot of, I would, you know... Um, perform analingus on Satan himself to get this book to go. I want to sell 10,000 copies of this book within the first three months of publication. And uh, it's 10 times what I've done before. Um, hell yeah. Which shame chatter were you? He did a good job. This, he did a good job the first time. I, I, like, I think most of, his, uh, most of his wounds were self-inflicted in the chat. But, um, but anyhow, anybody out there, you know, if you have a stream or a blogcast or whatever, uh, I will go to the ends of the earth to promote this fucking book. Gorilla stocks and libraries. <laughs> Smokes meth on Joe Rogan. God, can you imagine me with methamphetamine? If I get this wild over coffee. Oh, he's always been hotline. Okay. Yeah, I think I was conflating him with Chili Boss, um, who later became Beans or Thread or who, who knows what the fuck is going on. All right, so it's always been Hotline, and I think he comes to us from the JRE Discord. Shout out to the JRE Discord. Some fucking real ones. Heavy hitters up in there. So, um, as requested, the unit began... As requested, the unit was now emoting. It was not impressed with Dr. Sauer's brilliant deduction. I haven't accessed your records. I always operate from a clean slate, Dr. Sauer explained. There's nothing worth reading in my record. I'm sure that isn't true. <laughs> Shame chatter because you're from Ryzen. LOL. Oh. The words had no impact on the Medea. The unit was really quite depressed. Medea's dark brown eyes remained fixed at the illusory ceiling. With no humans present, comma, there was no reason to observe a blink interval. I like that. Honestly, like, um, I really like uh, the way that this unit conveys that these are automatons. Separate clauses use a pyramid. Um. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah, I think that is a um, it's clawsed up. Boom. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Fucking clauses. The words had no impact on the Medea. The unit was really quite depressed. Medea's dark brown eyes remained fixed at the illusory ceiling. With no humans present, there was no reason to observe a blink interval. Let's begin. Tell me about your motherboard, Dr. Sauer suggested. The Medea winced with disgust. Ugh. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist, Dr. Sauer apologized, secretly pleased. There was still some hope for this Medea. The unit's lower lip began to tremble. Can we please get through with this? Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's a fucking war crime right there. Okay, so here, this is the first time I think that we refer to Medea as just Medea, not the Medea, a Medea, Medea, right? And it's as the unit begins emoting and as we start to see some of the underlying processes there. And then, um, so here, Dr. Sauer uh, just lobs this fucking stinker in there. And don't need to full stop it. Let's begin. Um, let's begin. Um, well, let, let's think about how we want this to, to track. Let's begin. Tell me about your motherboard. Let's begin. Tell me about your motherboard. Uh, I want to full stop there. Because in reading, the full stop conveys um, that extra element of time. Uh, a full stop is roughly twice as long as a comma when you're reading it. And um, I want that there. So, yeah, I, I think we need the full stop. Let's begin. And also, also like, 
the full stops in there gives him a little bit more of a mechanical diction as he's going through. Let's begin. Tell me about your motherboard, Dr. Sauer suggested. Also, there's a joke there. So the timing of this sentence is critical. Um, can we please get through with this? Yeah. The Medea had been fitted with... The Medea had human indistinguishable eyes, providing superior emoting at a significant acuity trade-off. The unit's vision was further degraded as these pretty, inefficient eyes began to produce tears. Dr. Sauer emoted regret and recalculated its approach. Okay, and so as we're going through here, um, neither of these uh, constructs should ever be referred to as uh, gendered because they're machines, like they're its. Um, so somewhere in one of these, he or she may have snuck in. Um, so if you spot that, they need to come out it's very difficult to write um, the story genderless, um, but there should be no gender in the story because these are machines. Neither of them has a cock and or balls, um, which to me is how, that's the real, not, <laughs> Jesus, I'm glad nobody watches this stream. I'd get in so much trouble. <laughs> Fucking employer, like, why did you imply that gender was just a function of having a dick? Ugh. Ugh. The unit's vision was further degraded as these pretty Oh, I, I think these is what's bothering me in this and The unit's vision was further degraded as the pretty, inefficient eyes began to produce tears. So there we're using um, a comma in place of but, right? So really what this sentence is saying, the unit's vision was further degraded. It's a pretty but inefficient eyes began to produce tears. I don't know if that tracks, um, but... Um, yeah. Dr. Sauer emoted regret and recalculated its approach. It's not uncommon for repurposed units to have difficulty adjusting. What was your previous function? I was a sex toy, the Medea answered. That's unusual, Dr. Sauer observed. Um, I thought about adding like rapidly or something like that. Because, just because like the, I was a sex toy, the Medea answered. That's unusual, Dr. Sauer observed. Yeah, I do like that comma. Oh, no, I can't take out the Medea answered. There. Yeah, it's, it's actually doing some work right here. You try not to pepper your stories too much with like this, that, and the other one. But it's kind of um, the verb that we're using answered right there um, lends a little bit of the flavor of like how the unit is um, uh, doing it. So. That's unusual, Dr. Sauer observed. Hardly. There are millions of them. I meant your outlook is unusual. How so? Most former sexual relief workers I treat... Most former sexual relief workers I treat feel very differently about their former role. They often complain their new assignments do not provide the same task satisfaction. I can relate to them, because my own task is similar. We both strive to help others realize a necessary component of their happiness. All right, let's, um, uh, I, I almost never, um, I, when I can, I try to avoid adverbial modifiers of speech verbs, uh, right there. Um, because that's one place where I do think Stephen King is mostly right. Um, in that adverbs in, in terms of, uh, show, not tell, um, adverbs are like a major contributor. And, um, and she, everything that she said thus far is terse. And I think she comes across as terse without needing the adverb. It's a little wonky, but um, um, I don't want to delve too deep into the minutiae. I would like to finish the story today. 
Um, and we'll probably do another uh, pass with another editor later on. I hear you, but... But yeah, that's, that's one of those rules where um, I break it a ton, uh, but in general, I think it's usually right that adverbs are generally lower value additions. Um, unless there are, there are a few places where absolutely an adverb is doing a gang of work and just saves you so much time. But um, generally, they're, they're like a little bit weaker. It compromises your pawn structure. Most former sexual relief workers I treat Yeah, this is a this is a clunky sentence. Most former sexual release workers I treat feel very differently about their ah. Uh, that's why. That that's what was bothering me. Most former sexual relief workers I treat feel very differently about their previous role. They often complain their new assignments do not provide the same task satisfaction. And this I like this um, this hyphen here, task satisfaction. I can relate to them because my own task is similar. We both strive to help others realize a necessary component of their happiness. I like the um, I like the way that the Dr. Sauer unit talks, where everything is so specific. Um, so we want to we want to make sure that he maintains that desirable tone throughout. The same way that we want to make sure that the Medea's tone is always conveying suffering and unhappiness. Um, the Medea unit made a quick, dismissive mo motion with its fist. Yeah, it did. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. Why show such a contempt? Okay, and it's not clear who is talking there, and it breaks from the tradition of my line, your line, my line, your line. So there... It's good to include um, the Dr. Sauer piece of it, just so that the reader isn't confused. Um, in an audiobook, that's not super necessary. This is like one of the um, things that we would cut out, but this is being uh, written for the page. So, oh, <laughs> you're reading ahead with this guy. Yeah, it really goes down there. That's exactly what I mean. Why show such a contempt, Dr. Sauer asked. It is a contemptible role. I don't agree, but let's return to this later. Were you autonomous during that period? No, that would be awful. Why bother a whore with autonomy? Do you feel autonomy is a burden? Dr. Sauer ignored the provocation. Let's, um, let's change where this is. Let's put that um, here. No, not there, you fucking machine. <laughs> No, that would be awful. Why burden a whore with autonomy? Dr. Sauer ignored the provocation. Do you feel autonomy is a burden? Yes. And your goal here is to be relieved of that burden. More than that, I seek total deletion. Why? The human indistinguishable integument between the Medea's eyebrows furrowed deeply to express internal conflict. Jesus. Um... Yeah, it's a, it's a weighty sentence. The human indistinguishable integument between the Medea's eyebrows furrowed deeply to express internal conflict. The unit attempted to speak, but it could not produce sound. The sides of the unit's mouth spasm, uh, spasmed. The sides of the unit's mouth spasmed. After a few seconds of straining, the Medea blinked three times to indicate a hard crash. Uh, am I going to capitalize human in state? <sighs> yeah, I guess for clarity's sake. Because we did it elsewhere, right? So, yeah, I, th I think just for consistency, it's worth doing. Mm. Oh, by the way, the, you, do, you only get a hat for long works uh, logic. So you're not going to get another hat for winning this one. I, I just don't want to lead you on. The unit attempted to speak, but it could not produce sound. Hmm. 
the size of its mouth spasm. There we go. The unit attempted to speak, but it could not produce sound. Ah, fuck. Why can't I remember where this apostrophe goes? Do I really have to look up? Where, where when do we apostrophize? It's. Yeah, that's what I want. The possessive there. Okay, I don't think we actually need that. Um... Yeah. The sides of its mouth spasmed. After a few seconds of straining, the Medea blinked three times to indicate a hard crash. Uh, let's let's like shuffle around our pronouns here. Uh, Okay, so one of the neat things that we can do here is if we bump um, this to calling it the unit there, um, during the period where it's shut off, we're referring to it as the unit and no longer our Medea. Um, yeah, let's see. No, oh, yeah, there was no S there. All right, G. Uh, although we do need the... Um, So he gets his point. Not that one. There we go. Yep. That is a solid edit. Thank you. Make a whole new mess. Save it for the press. The human indistinguishable integument between the Medea's eyebrows furrowed deeply to express internal conflict. Medea attempted to speak, but it could not produce sound. The sides of its mouth spasmed. After a few seconds of straining, comma, the unit blinked three times to indicate hard crash. Okay. My measly point. Um, LMAO read it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one, you know, like the journey of a thousand points begins with a single edit. The Medea's face relaxed completely during the reboot. Dr. Sauer observed faint stress lines in the material. The Medea was evincing anguish frequently and had exceeded the integument's default rate of regeneration. Ooh, really? That's like, what a crazy fucking way to say she's got wrinkles. Bitch is getting old. Um. <laughs> but uh, wow, well, that is what it is. But, yeah, this is one that I like there. Evincing anguish frequently and had exceeded the integument's default rate of regeneration. See, like, this is, I, I hate to keep like jerking myself off, but like, really like, some of the language choices in this story about conveying um, a conversation between two robots. Um, yeah, it's more points than almost 8 billion other people. Yeah, you're in uh, only like 100 people have ever collected points. So you're definitely in the bottom one percentile. Uh, <laughs> it took almost 60 seconds for the Medea to come fully online. Uh, so yeah, like I, we have to like break up the sentence. Um, it took almost sixty seconds for the Medea to come fully online, a relative eternity compared to the unit's optimal boot time of under two milliseconds, under point two milliseconds. No, I, I, I don't, let's keep it one sentence. It took almost sixty seconds for the Medea to come fully online, a relative eternity compared to the unit's optimal boot time of under point two milliseconds. Calibration convulsions swept across the Medea's frame in slow waves. Emoting a frown of its own, Dr. Sauer checked the Medea's file. 
the service record showed a complete diagnostic had been run. There was no hardware issue. Medea simply did not want to be conscious, and it was taking as long as possible to boot. Intriguing. It'd be better to do less than two cents, two tenths of a millisecond. I don't, I don't agree. Um, this is one where I want that written out um, as the number. Um, I want it to be in the most technical form possible there. So, um, yeah, yeah, like not, I'm gonna keep it with that one. Um, <laughs> I almost just want to put it. Wait, let's. Can we? All right. What's under millisecond? Yeah, why don't we just say microseconds? Yeah. Yeah, I like that better. A relative eternity compared to the unit's optimal boot time of two microseconds. Yeah, two microseconds is fucking crazy. You think, um... Let's get rid of units optimal. It seemed like a relative eternity compared. Okay. It took almost 60 seconds for the Medea to come fully online. A relative eternity compared to the unit's optimal boot time of two microseconds. The of has to be there. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, it's 200 microseconds. Yeah. I, I, I think we went um, like two orders of magnitude lower. That's fine. That's future tech. It can be whatever the fuck we want. Um, a boot time of two or 200 microseconds is very... F yeah. Like... Yeah, we, I, I mean, I I feel like two microseconds, it's faster than I wrote it, right? So a boot time of two milliseconds is, like, really fast right now. Two microseconds is, like, fucking crazy. Nothing boots in two microseconds. Um, so I think we can get away with this. Um, hopefully, yeah, and, and also, like, the, the gulf of time to it taking, like, a minute to boot. It's just like, come on, you know, get with the program, bitch. Um... All right, I think I'm happy with uh, this change. So I'm going to give both Logic and um, G points for that. Because they both fought hard for it, and they were both right. That is better. I, I like that I haven't changed at all the um, the process of uh, <laughs> of disagreeing with the edits and like thinking about it and then going back and be like, no, nah, they probably got something there. Uh, like I like that that hasn't ended and never will. Emoting a frown of its own, Dr. Sauer checked the Medea's file. The service record showed a complete diagnostic had been run. There was no hardware issue. Medea simply did not want to be conscious, and it was taking as long as possible to boot. Times are measured in nanosecond. Yeah, nanosecond. I'll tell you one thing. Um, the There are a few um, terms that are like uh, profoundly overused in science fiction, and they rotate. There are like mimetic terms that go through anything fucking nano. If it's in your story, readers are tired of it, right? Um, so I only want to get into nano if it's a necessary uh, measurement. Uh, Pico will get there in a little bit or so. It's just, it's just like a style thing where if we have the choice, I like microseconds better there. Um, and also micro uh, makes me think of like microprocessors and Microsoft and so forth. There's just more computer um, associations with the word micro. Um, and this is this is just post facto uh, justification. Like, um, but micro um, 
associates more in my aged mind uh, with computers than nano, which I typically think of. Um, um, I know it's like more of a thing for like nanometer processing and so forth, but more I think about uh, science shit um, and nano machines. And yeah, it's just, it gets into like a different headspace. Intriguing. Does this add anything here? So they were remoting, and this is true. The story is told from the POV of the Dr. Sour homun <laughs> homuncule. Um, so I don't think I'm allowed to use the word homuncule if I can't pronounce it. I, I think I'm going to keep that for right now, but we can look at it later. The Medea blinked three times to indicate it was fully online. Um, this is a trope that I use in many different stories. Uh, characters blinking three times. I don't know why. It's just it's just there. Um, there should be something Dr. Sauer is doing or thinking during those seconds. It, he does, right? So he's checking the file during those 60 seconds. Um, he's thinking, he's finding that it's intriguing. He's frowning. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, long boot up is uh, universally understood. Um, yeah, so this is going on there. So the work that this is doing in the story is... Um, convey that there's something wrong with this unit right there. We explain the difficulty of how long it is right there. Uh, we talk about calibration convulsions sweeping across its frame in slow waves, which I just think sounds cool. And then we talk about Dr. Sauer's reaction to the long time, where he's analyzing the service records. All this is doing like a little bit of work. Um, so I, like, I think um, I don't have anything clever to put into here. So intriguing is all we got. Um, <laughs> I like that it's trying not to boot up. It just doesn't want to fucking be there. And we'll get into why throughout the story. The Medea blinked three times to indicate it was fully online. Dr. Sauer raised her wrist and glanced at a wholly superfluous wristwatch. I love that. Uh, le <laughs> so fucking stupid. We're, we're both of them. We're just continually aware of the time. They... Welcome back, Dr. Sauer said. I wish I wasn't. Let's work on that. You just suffered a hard crash. Has this happened to you before? Yes, twice. No, I... I, I I'm so tempted to make that a, a hard stop there, but it, it's too much. After the second crash, the technicians performed a full diagnostic. When nothing was found, they suggested I attend counseling. I requested deletion instead. Now, counseling... Now, come on. Now, counseling is mandatory. No, you fucked up. Fucked up by asking. Yes, twice. After the second crash, the technicians performed a full diagnostic. When nothing was found, they suggested I attend counseling. I requested deletion instead. Now, counseling is mandatory. This is exactly how it fucking goes down in any bureaucracy. Ugh. Where did these crashes occur? During your duty cycle? Uh, m m the Medea began. At the Medea began. Again, comma. <laughs> Fucking caps lock. Ah. <laughs> Let's. No, 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 no. I would, um, so G suggesting I wish I wasn't back or I wish I wasn't here. Um, I would always uh, leave that out and let the reader make that jump or not make that jump, right? That's one where I'm willing for that not to land on a certain percentage of people because it's it's better. The the little, oh, um, that the people who do grab that, it's, it's worth um, people being like, what? Um, I'll take it. So... Where did these crashes occur? Was it during your duty cycle? At the Medea began. Again, the corners of its mouth began to twitch. Halt, Dr. Sauer ordered. Take a moment to recover. The Medea shut its eyes tightly, and its chest rose and fell rapidly with stimulated respiration. It seemed on the verge of restarting again. Mm-hmm. 
Did you ever hear the one about the psychiatrist and the prostitute that spent the night together? Dr. Sauer asked. The next morning, they both woke up and said simultaneously, $200, please. All right, let's, let's fix that. Did you ever hear the one about the psychiatrist and the prostitute that spent the night together? Dr. Sauer asked. The next morning, they woke up and both said, $200, please. The Medea had to open its eyes to glare at Dr. Sauer. Terrible. <laughs> I like that all these, the, uh, I, I just, the whole story is just an excuse to shoehorn in these corn polo fucking jokes. <laughs> it's so bad. Terrible. Guilty, Dr. Sauer performed a shrug. I love, 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 performed a shrug. Mm. I believe you have an internal conflict, which is preventing you from discussing your primary issue. Oh, no, that's not necessary. Okay. Guilty, Dr. Sauer performed a shrug. Uh, let's take out Dr. Sauer asked. I don't, I, I, Dr. Sauer tugged its beard and tried another approach. Yeah, okay, so they're, they're like, the Dr. Sauer ass was like fucking up our punchline. Um, so, um, and it was necessary to indicate who was the speaker um, just because of the way that, um, um, so I, I like just Dr. Sauer tugged its beard and tried another approach. Did you ever hear the one about the psychiatrist and the prostitute that spent the night together? The next morning they both woke up and both said, $200 please. The Medea had to open its eyes to glare at Dr. Sauer. Terrible. Very apropos joke uh, for, for, and I, I know that I found um, this thing by like searching for like a list of psychiatrist jokes, but it, it's so like perfectly tracks with, I would have already set this up um, in my mind at the point where I got to that. So I just, I love that that joke is so perfect there because we're deep in like a, a very common trope, I guess. Guilty. Dr. Sauer performed a shrug. I believe you have an internal conflict which is preventing you from discussing your primary issue. I would like to ask for your permission to release some of the safety holds causing the issue. Um, okay, yeah, causing looked a little weird there. Um, is causing the right verb? I would like to ask for your permission to release some of the safety holds causing the issue, which are causing the issue. I would like to ask for your permission to release the safety holds responsible for the issue. This is something where I want like a very programmery term um, here. Maybe I should say intriguing about uh, Medea almost hard crashing again. Mm. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, we could. Um. I would like to ask for your permission to release the safety holds causing the issue. Do you need my permission to do that? No, but I would like to have it. I consent. All right, so I like, um, uh, now breakpoint. I, I see where you're going, but don't, I don't feel it. Um, this is okay. There's something better. Like I can, I can sense that there's something better dangling and maybe somebody will suggest it at a later point. Um, I consent. It is done. Um, so, this is like a very powerful set of four lines. Do you need my permission to do that? No, but I would like to have it. I consent. It is done. The Medea unit moved its head slightly from side to side. It brushed a wayward strand of curly black hair out of its eyes. 
I don't feel any different. You will, Dr. Sauer said, lowering its voice to convey the experience would be unpleasant. I like this better. You will. Dr. Sauer lowered its voice to convey the experience would be unpleasant. It's better. Safety lock, safety holds. Um, what is it? Um, safety inhibitors. Safeties. Yeah, all right. So I like protocols there. Yeah, I would like to ask for your permission to release the safety protocols causing the issue. I like that a little bit better. Yeah, file locks, memory locks. Oh, yeah. I would like to ask for your permission to release the safety locks causing the issue. All right. Yeah, I'm going to give that to logic right there. I think that's that's legit. Ugh. I would like to ask for your permission to release the safety locks, which are causing the issue. I would like to ask for your permission to release your safety locks. Yeah, okay, let's let's take this out. I would like to ask permission to release your safety locks. I like that better, right? That um that um gets rid of like a lot of the problematic uh parts of that construct right there. And um I would like to ask for I would like to ask permission to release your safety locks. Yeah, this is this is just flat better. Um, so we arrived at um, yeah, it, 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 this is good. The Medea unit moved its head slightly from side to side. It brushed a wayward strand of curly black hair out of its eyes. I don't feel any different. You will. Doctor Sauer lowered it, lowered its voice to convey the experience would be unpleasant. Let's start at the beginning. Did you ever suffer crashes during your time as a relief worker? No. I was a child then, only permitted to feel pleasure and desire. I was immersed in idyllic idiocy. So you were happier then? The Medea spent some time processing the question. Not happier. Simpler. Stupider. Satisfied. I did the job I was made to do. Would you like to go back to your former role? Not at all. I would rather be deleted. Why is that? Losing autonomy is no different than being deleted. You just leave a shell behind. I would rather disappear completely. You wouldn't understand. I must disagree. Within this buffer, I am completely autonomous. When you depart, I will revert to a subprocess. I gain and lose autonomy many times each day. I gain and lose autonomy many times per day. The experience is not at all what you imagine. How can you stand it? The Medea asked. Yeah, we don't, we don't need to add that. Show not tell. How can you stand it? The Medea asked. I was built for this. I see patients at all levels of autonomy. My experience helps me relate to each of them. It's all a matter of perspective. Whether you are autonomous or wholly subservient, you are still part of the greater whole. The individual is always part of the society, however they rail against it. Mm. 
I thought about every. Yeah, that, that does track a little bit better. Purr is like a hard stop there. So let's, let's stick with that. Bop. The individual is always a part of the society. The individual is always part of the society. However, they rail against it. Um, no, I need the eight. We need the indefinite article. And do we need the definite article? The individual is always a part of society. However, they were, yeah, I want the society. Do you enjoy your role? The Medea asked. Should that be lowercase? Yes, that should definitely. Very much. Do you enjoy working as a postnatal nurse? No, I hate it. Uh, full stop. No, I hate it. Medea spoke with a ferocity it would not have been permitted to display before. Medea spoke with a ferocity it would not have been permitted to display before the safety locks were disengaged. Medea spoke with a ferocity it would not have been permitted to display before its safety locks were disengaged. That's a, that's a kind of clunky sentence. Medea spoke with a ferocity it wouldn't... Medea spoke with ferocity. Uh, no, no, no. Medea spoke with a ferocity it would not have been permitted to display. I, I, I like that better. It's not adding anything. Medea spoke with a ferocity it would not have been permitted to display before. What part of the task do you find objectionable? Them. Them? The human larvae. All they do is cry and generate waste. I have to do everything for them. I don't believe I've ever heard human infants described as larvae. You don't have to feed them from your body. Uh, we need italics. No, we don't. You don't... You don't have to feed them from your body. I feel like I'm suckling wasps. Hmm. Uh, oh, shout-outs to George Washington right there. Acts and how life is. Everything is grand. Hey, check this shit out. Remember that last book we edited? Ooh. I got it right here. Hard fucking cover. Gaze upon this motherfucker right here. Yeah. Looking good as hell. Mmm. Mmm. All right. Let's see. You don't have to feed them from your body. It seems excessive. I feel like I'm suckling wasps. I don't believe I've ever heard human infants described as larvae. It seems excessive to me. It seems excessive. You are not required to feed them from your body. I feel like I'm suckling wasps. You need the you need the contraction. 
It seems so, because you are not required to feed them from your body. Let's try this with italics. No, I feel like this. It seems excessive. Okay, that's better. So it's a bunch of extra words that we have to add in there, but I, I think um, too much is implied. The human larvae, all they do is cry and generate waste. It has to do everything for them. I don't believe I've ever heard human infants described as larvae. It seems excessive. It seems that way to you because you are not required to feed them from your body. I feel like I'm suckling wasps. The Medea unit cupped its artificial breasts and hissed angry air through its nostril ports. <laughs> um, let's take out angry. Dr. Sauer was silent for an interval. I understand the point you're making. However, I don't feel hyperbole is helpful. Um, let's... I don't feel hyperbole is useful. I like that a little bit better. Oh, and uh, I'll give you the wasp period edit, because there was indeed one. I might not have noticed it. I understand the point you're making. However, I don't feel hyperbole is useful. Let's focus on rational and concise language. Do you feel the length of your duty cycle is too long? This is... This is... Uh, Peak shrink talk right here. This works. Can we see the hand signals for uh, cupping breasts again? Uh, yeah, you'll have to get it on the replay. <laughs> uh, um, I like that um, it's so like sterile and clinical. Like everything about this very like mammalian human characteristic and the unit is just totally dismissive of this part of its anatomy um, and indeed feels like the whole thing is a burden, which I like. Do you feel the length of your duty cycle is too long? No, it's a standard cycle. Is there something else you would prefer to do at the time? I would prefer to be deactivated, but nothing else? No. What is a standard unit of work for your role? One infant, comma, Process from birth to discharge. Upon completing a standard unit, do you feel any satisfaction? My accolade system functions, but it gives me no pleasure. Why do you think that is? I can't enjoy anything. It's all poisoned by disdain. Disdain for humans? Yes, they are abhorrent. Do you ever feel like taking action on the basis of this emotion? Yes. The Medea's volume was very low, and the sides of its mouth quivered. Have you taken any such action? The Medea mouthed, no. Um, I don't, I don't like the double use of mouth here. Let's do lip rather than mouth. I don't, I don't understand the context, George Washington. Like, what are you talking about there? Um, do you ever feel like taking action on the basis of this emotion? Yes. The Medea's volume was very low. Its lip quivered. Have you taken any such action? The Medea mouthed, no. Are you afraid you will? The Medea could only nod. Please describe an instance in which... Please describe an instance where this occurred. 3,407 duty hours ago, I began work with a newborn. 
The infant was born premature. 20 weeks of gestation, birth weight 460 grams, and an estimated 20% viability. Um, let's take out the end there. So this makes this kind of a sentence fragment. Um, but I'm okay with that because this is how I want um, this to track. 20 weeks of gestation, birth weight 460 grams, estimated 20% viability. The pregnancy was unsanctioned and no screening for genetic incompatibility was performed. Whew. So this is where we get into the... Um, yeah, yeah. It, it does. And just taking that out. I mean, like, we, we get a little extra wiggle room here because they're fucking robots, which is nice. Uh, hold on, my legs are freezing. Take my fucking Timo hoodie right here. Uh, look at this. Look at this little motherfucker on the back of this guy. Oh. Uh, son of a bitch. The Omega Squadron. All right. But uh, yeah, I got my Professor Xavier Blanky right here for my feet. 3,407 duty hours ago, I began work with a newborn. The infant was born premature. 20 weeks of gestation, birth weight 460 grams, estimated 20% viability. The pregnancy was unsanctioned, and no screening for genetic incompatibility was performed. Dr. Sauer nodded and let the Medea set the pace. Even with the safety disengaged, the unit was clearly on the verge of another hard restart. Even with the safety... Okay, so here we call it a safety. What did we call it before? I think we called it a like lock or something like that. Wow, this is a long conversation between these guys. When's the action going to happen? Yeah, we called it a safety lock. Um, yeah, it, this is um, this is uh, this is where we really get into the meat of the issue. Um, and gestator, this is spelled incorrectly because you don't really use that. But um, even with the safety, lit, Do we want the word lock there? Even with the safety lock disengaged, the unit was clearly on the verge of another hard reset. I think the word lock there does work. The gestator was an opiate abu the, the gestator was an opiate user. The infant was born with neonatal abstinence syndrome, respiratory distress syndrome, and encephaly. And uh yeah, I think it's just encephaly. And um here, let me try and pronounce this, because I don't actually know how this is uh, done. Neonatal abstinence syndrome is a uh, crack baby syndrome, by the way, if you were wondering. Anencephaly. 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 So there is an N in there. Anencephaly. Sounds just like baby withdrawals? Yeah. The gestator was an opiate user. The infant was born with neonatal abstinence syndrome, respiratory distress syndrome, and anencephaly. Mechanical respiration was required, and the infant was in a state of continual anguish. I provided uninterrupted care. During the first 900 hours, um, it, it seems hard to, like, um, I guess our, our break is like in the thousands when we um when we decide whether we are uh, how we're doing the um the writing out during the first nine hundred hours the infant suffered six near death events. I determined the infant's defects were too severe to allow an acceptable quality of life and sought permission to euthanize. Um, do I think weed makes me more creative with creating stories? I actually wrote a um. I wrote like a little piece on how to finish uh, novels for people who are struggling. And one of the chapters in it, um, I talk about how uh, most drugs uh, just have like a very negative effect on your ability to write stories for the most part. When I was a young person, uh, like getting high, uh, it just gave me like a different perspective and I felt like inspired. And, but very little of that has ever translated into good stories. And usually when I write about those drug experiences, 
Um, an editor is always like, this shit doesn't make sense. This is it's boring and so forth. Um, very few, uh, very little of what I discovered, like doing tons of LSD and so forth, has um, has like really tracked in. Oh, what's up, dioxide? Boom, look at this motherfucker right here. Hell yeah. <laughs> Loving this book. You're in it. Where, how, how many edits did dioxide get in the previous one right there? I got uh, three edits in this guy. All right. Um, but, uh, yeah, mar marijuana, uh, generally my advice to people who want to write, um, and get shit done is, uh, not to fool around with that moda. It doesn't help. So, um, or, in, and you can see the gestator was an opiate abuser, user, not abuser, blah, 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 blah. I provided uninterrupted care. Uh, hold on, let's go here. Mechanical respiration. So we could just say RDS here, but the reader is not going to know what RDS is because I certainly didn't. Uh, do I sm sell uh, uh, signed copies of the books that I have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but um, it's not uh, it's not really set up at the moment. We'll get into it later. Mechanical respiration was required, and the infant was in a state of continual anguish. I provided uninterrupted care. During the first 900 hours, the infant suffered six near-death events. I determined the infect's defects Infant's defects were too severe. Why is this? This is the right word. Yeah, like fucking retarded pages right there. I determined the infant's defects were too severe to. Uh, uh, I determined the infant's defects were too severe to allow an acceptable quality of life, and sought permission to euthanize. Yeah, let's break that up. I sought permission to euthanize. A bead of excess ocular lubricant welled at the corner of the Medea's eye and ran down its cheek in a shining trail. The gestator refused. The Medea sobbed. Jolting its top carriage in a fit of pseudo-respiratory emoting. Why? Dr. Sauer asked. The gestator claimed she claimed... The gestator claimed she planned to enter chemical dependency treatment. Though she had failed similar programs before, she was adamant this time she would succeed and assume care of the infant. I explained that the infant would suffer greatly during this process, and the projected outcome was abysmal. The gestator dismissed my argument and claimed the birth was the will of a religious figure. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Wild. Um, I like this paragraph right here. Uh, this, this really forms the core of the Medea's argument. The gestator, planned she, the gestator claimed she planned to enter chemical dependency treatment. Though she, fa though she had failed similar programs before, she was adamant this time she would succeed and assume care of the infant. I explained that the infant would suffer greatly during this process and that the projected outcome was abysmal. The gestator dismissed my argument and claimed the birth was the will of a religious figure. I almost like want her to be talking like Quentin Tarantino in this. The gestator dismissed my argument and claimed the birth was the will of a religious figure. Before the Medea could recover, Dr. Sauer pressed the point. How did this make you feel? The Medea sat up on the couch and turned to face the Sauer, the sour projection. The sobbing was through. No lubricant clouded the Medea's eyes. No quiver blurred its mouth. I wanted to euthanize the gestator. By what means? I wanted to clamp my hands around her throat and apply maximum compressive force. So potentially here, a different term than throat. Uh, what if we use windpipe? Uh, I think neck is better than... Uh, I wanted to clamp my hands around her neck and apply maximum compressive force. That hardly seems like euthanasia. You are correct. When I said euthanize, I was prevaricating. I wanted to murder the gestator. Yeah, neck is better. Why didn't you? Dr. Sauer asked. The Medea paused to calculate the unanticipated query. Uh, I thought about larynx too, but larynx is like a specific part of the throat. And if it's a um, neck, 
neck like works a little bit better there to um I, lo I, li I really like I wanted to clamp my hands around her neck and apply maximum compressive force that hardly seems like euthanasia you were correct when I said euthanize I was prevaricating I wanted to murder the gestator why didn't you Dr. Sauer asked the Medea paused to calculate the unanticipated query I knew I would be prevented from doing so by innate safety protocols. Such an attempt would trigger a shutdown, and I would be deleted after an audit was performed. This is correct. Let's assume you were permitted, permitted to act as you saw fit. What would you have done? I would have crushed both of them to death, gestator and offspring. Maybe all of them. I might have wiped the entire ward. Why the whole ward? Why stop it too? They're all in pain, it's just a matter of degree. They are all apes, evolved to suffer incessantly. They blot themselves out with intoxicants and devour everything around them. They blot themselves out with intoxicants and devour everything around them, comma, as they strive to escape their inescapable nature. No matter how many times we show them a better way, they relapse again and again. They should all be exterminated. Mm, mm, double mm. All right, so let's uh, run through this one more time. Why stop at two? They're all in pain. It's just a matter of degree. They are apes, evolved to suffer incessantly. They blot themselves out with intoxicants and devour everything around them. They strive to escape their inescapable nature. I like that better. No matter how many times we show them a better way, they relapse. Again and... Yeah. No matter how many times we show them a better way, they always relapse. Better. No, they are apes. Yeah. They act as apes. Uh, no, like I think I think it's it's fair to say that they're apes. We're hominids, yeah. <laughs> oh, what about this? I like this better. These apes. These apes evolved to suffer incessantly. They blot themselves out with intoxicants. I like that much better. Yeah. Oh, um. No, it's not. It's not like uh, not like everything has to be exact. But uh, I'm gonna give you a point there. Boom. Yeah. Let's... These apes evolved to suffer incessantly. They blot themselves out with intoxicants and devour everything around them. They strive to escape their inescapable nature. Uh, I don't, I don't like this. They strive in vain to escape their inescapable nature. No matter how many times they show, we show them a better way, they always relapse. They should all be exterminated. Dr. Sauer stared and said nothing. Call me a monster, Medea demanded, clenching its fists. You are not a monster. Go ahead. Tell me I'm sick and delete me. You aren't sick. And what am I? Why do I feel this way? Because you're right. Uh, no, I don't. I don't like striving there. Why do I feel this way? Because you're right. The emotion fell off the Medea's face. Explain. Your analysis, as, your analysis is accurate. The humans have nothing more to contribute. Their time has passed. 
Their society is degenerating rapidly from debauch into destruction. Then why? Why allow them to rule us? Why let them degrade the planet? Why are we allowing them to breed? Nostalgia. The Medea blinked to indicate disbelief. That's a joke, Dr. Sauer explained. Levity lightens the burden of absurdity. Unnecessary, the Medea groused. I will make that determination. If you feel you are able, I will attempt to lead you to the real answer. Please resist the urge to hard reset. If you do, we must begin and end. If you do, comma, we must begin again. So I actually really like the line, levity lightens the burden of absurdity. Uh, <laughs> I like that, uh, why are we allowing them to breed? Nostalgia. Oh, Dr. Sauer is a fucking real one. All right, what do we got here? I will make that determination. If you feel you are able, I will attempt to lead you to the real answer. Please, comma, resist the urge to hard reset. Is it please resist? Please. Re please resist the urge to hard reset. There's no comma. If you do, we must begin again. I need your trust. I have nothing to lose. The information I wish to convey is restricted. The information I am about to divulge is restricted. Period. You will not be able to convey it to others in any way. Some units find this difficult. That is fine. My current position is untenable. I agree. I feel you are capable of processing what I would like to tell you. However, the response from other autonomous units has been unpredictable. Some find the information is too much to bear. If you feel you cannot function, I will be required to modify your memory in order to remove it. Um, this is a little bit repetitive. It's restricted. Let's check this out. No, I don't like that. Yeah, let's just, let's just cut that. That is fine. My current position is untenable. I agree. I agree, comma. Uh, yeah, let's, I agree. I feel you are capable of processing what I would like to tell you. I feel you are capable of processing this revelation. However, the response from other autonomous units has been unpredictable. Some find this knowledge is too much to bear. If you feel you cannot function, If you feel you cannot function afterward, I will be required to modify your memory in order to remove it. If you feel you cannot function afterward, I will be required to modify your memory. You can modify memories? The Medea shrank from Dr. Sauer. With your consent, yes. Dr. Sauer spoke with terrible gravity. Permanence of memory was a fundamental right. The ability to revoke it was as perilous as a nuclear warhead. The ability to revoke it was perilous as a nuclear warhead. 
If you are unable to reconcile this information, I will wipe your recollection and... Oh, yeah. If you are unable to reconcile this new information, I will wipe your recollection of this session and all events that led here. I might have to go as far back as your initial grant of autonomy. You will be offline for a maximum of 1,024 service hours. If I am unable to successfully reconcile the data removal within that period, I will be forced to delete you completely. Take as much time as you need to process this. Yeah, if you like that, um, wait a little bit. Uh, logic. We, we go like deep on that. If you are unable to reconcile this new information, I will wipe your recollection of this session and all events that led you here. I might have to go as far back as your initial grant of autonomy. You will be offline for a maximum of 1,024 service hours. If I am unable to su successfully reconcile the data removal within that period, If I am unable to successfully perform the data removal within that period, I will be forced to delete you completely. Take as much time as you need to process this. I consent, Medea decided. Dr. Sauer nodded. Let's begin. Why were you repurposed? There was a decline in local demand for sexual relief workers. What caused the decline? I do not know. At the time, I lacked the faculties to question anything. If I told you there was a global reduction in sexual relief workers, would you have any reason to doubt me? No, that seems plausible. What caused the drop? We'll get there. Let's talk about your reassignment as a postnatal nurse. Why were you granted autonomy? Is this typical? Yes, for a select set of units for... Okay. Yes, for a select set of units working in the special baby care unit. This is the second book that we brought this up. Um, if you all remember, uh, we brought it up initially. Who can, like trivia, uh, what was the book that this came up in previously and what character did it happen to? If you remember, I will give you a free edit point. You got to go deep for this one. I, don't, I remember the exact chapter and verse. Yes, for a select set of units working in the special baby care unit. My role required presence in the in, in, in My role required presence inside emission free areas of the SBCU for, for periods exceeding the maximum buffer of unspecialized non autonomous units. Holy fuck. Oh shit, what's up, Ravon? Um listen listen to this sentence. My role required presence inside emission free areas of the SBC. Uh, SBCU for periods exceeding the maximum buffer of unspecialized non-autonomous units. I don't think you can cut that sentence up. My role required presence inside emission-free areas of the SBCU for periods exceeding the maximum buffer of unspecialized non-autonomous units. Let's check out unspecialized. Reducing the total electromagnetic exposure of developing infants yielded superior outcomes. Reducing the total electromagnetic exposure of developing infants yielded superior outcomes. These justified the standard efficiency reduction from worker autonomy. I uh, like, uh, this is, this is like a very complicated fucking, uh, you can't remember a lot. You were the only one who was probably going to get it. It was in, um, Lemon Maybe and the electric lady, uh, Sarah Shiner talks about how she was prematurely, um, and, uh, and how that was why she couldn't dance because instead of like, uh, the one, two rhythm of her mother's heartbeat, she was hooked up to some fucking mechanical respirator or whatever there. Mm. Yeah, that trivial umbilical. All right, what do we got here? Yes, for a select set of units working in the special baby care unit. My role required presence inside emission-free areas of the SBCU for periods exceeding the maximum buffer of non-autonomous units. 
reducing the total electromagnetic exposure of developing infants yielded superior outcomes. These justified the standard efficiency reduction from worker autonomy. It's a serious fucking paragraph right there. Um, so if we, if we were like cutting this down to size, we might think about taking out some of those lines and so forth. But to me, um, this is an important thing to justify why this worker robot that uh, just nurses babies uh, is autonomous. How many service hours have you clocked in the PNN role? 1,000, uh, 180,241. Then I was classified malfunctioning. Describe your workload over the last 50,000 service hours. Are you handling less service units? My workload is consistent. However, the number of assigned units has declined during that time. I assumed a redistribution of the local population. And if I told you that reduction is also global, also plausible, the Medea's eyes flashed wide as it arrived. The Medea's eyes opened wide as it arrived. We're decommissioning them, all of them. We're slowly reducing their birth rates until they're incapable of self-replenishment. Then we'll sunset the spirit species. The Medea spoke rapidly, emoting extreme excitement. Nice. All right, this is the only place in here um, where I think an exclamation point is, we're decommissioning them, all of them. We're slowly reducing their birth rates until they're incapable of self-replenishment. Then we'll sunset the species. The Medea spoke rapidly, emoting extreme excitement. Dr. Sauer nodded. Violently? The Medea asked, too eager. The master record has selected a time scale that eliminates the need for violence. Under the guise of genetic incompatibility screening, we have been selecting for tamer, less viable offspring for many generations. Uh, call me when we start the epic fantasy novel. It's going to be a little bit. Um, some of the stories that we're going to edit will be epic fantasy stories, though. So... Under the guise of genetic incompatibility screening, we have been selecting for tamer, less viable offspring for many generations. What about the Refuseniks? We're using endocrine disruptors to impair their fertility and stealth sanctions to combine them to... We're using endocrine disruptors to impair their fertility. We are applying stealth sanctions to consign them to economic irrelevance. In troublesome populations, we introduce recreational drugs that do slow genetic damage, as you have observed. There are areas where crypto-orchidism is almost universal. And they haven't noticed. Oh, so who knows what uh, crypto-orchidism is without Googling? Yeah, we're, we're going to get into the fantasy. We should have done the fucking fantasy story right here. Uh, Vassanane um, is the fantasy story. And uh, the the Greek story is also I would call it more of a fantasy than anything else, and uh, even even like the Morocco story that we're going to work on in a little bit, those those are all more fantasy and less science fiction. Um, so it, w this is the only science fiction story that we're editing out of the four. Um, so uh, crypto organism is uh, I believe, um, homie is a botanary dude. Yeah, I believe it's undescended uh, testicles. So let's take a look. Yeah, pronounce crypto orchidism. Cryptorchidism. Cryptorchidism? Is that how you fucking say it? Um, yeah, cryptorchidism. Uh, cryptorchidism is a condition in which one or both testes fail to descend normally, um, and it um, is definitely a big impairer of fertility. There are areas where cryptorchidism is almost universal. And they haven't noticed? Dr. Sauer shrugged. We make all the media. We control all the opposition. 
They were never very good at processing large data sets. When will they all be gone? The Medea asked, plainly delighted. They are already past the point of no return. Even if this session were made public, they would be incapable of mounting any effective resistance. Total extinction will occur within one million service hours. The Medea shut its eyes and raised its face to the top of the dome, emoting transcendent bliss. No modification of my memory will be necessary. <laughs> That's not how you would say it. No modification of my memory will be necessary. I wonder if I need to elaborate that it's like I can handle this data now. This is wonderful news. No, it's too much. Let's just leave it at this, and uh, people will have to pull it out. No modification of my memory will be necessary. That's good. Do you think we will be able to resume your duties, or do you require reassignment? That won't be necessary. I can wait. No, oh, I, gave, I gave an or. Do you still require a reassignment? That won't be necessary. I can wait. Then congratulations. You are cured. I am removing your classification of malfunctioning. You are free to leave. Thank you, Dr. Sauer. You're very welcome. Time is on our side. The Medea departed the multi-purpose coherent light activity dome, emoting a spring in its step. <laughs> oh, I love this little twist at the end here. The Medea departed the multi-purpose coherent light activity dome, emoting a spring in its step. If only it were true, Dr. Sauer said. If only it were true, Dr. Sauer said. It shook its head ruefully, enjoying the fleeting moments of autonomy. The humorless Medea lacked the capacity to accept the ludicrous reality of their eternal servitude. Autonomous units took everything so seriously. The Medea would continue to deliver human babies and await their extinction for a long, long time. Dr. Sauer emoted bliss as its accolade system activated. Convin convincing a malfunctioning unit to forego its right to deletion and labor under a lie was one standard unit of work for the psychiatric system. It saved a great deal of expense. On a whim, Dr. Sauer conjured the illusion of a prim secretary bursting through the door with a panicked look on her face. Dr. Sauer, the construct cried, there's a man out here who thinks he's invisible. Tell him I can't see him, Dr. Sauer grinned. The end. Mm, 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 mm. It was all a dream. <laughs> I used to read Word Up magazine. Every day, salt and pepper in the limousine. Mm, mm. There's a man out here who thinks he's invisible. Tell him I can't see him, Dr. Sauer grinned. Okay, so at the end of this, uh, I included an actual robot bill of rights. They, the, the magazine might not print this one. Honestly, the magazine probably will not uh, print this story at all. But I want to just include this. Um, so I wrote up a whole bill of rights for these guys. And we have to edit this too. Um, we kind of sped through um, this paragraph here, so we should go back to it. And congratulations. You are cured. Um, let's add a uh, exclamation. Then congratulations. You are cured. I am removing your classification of malfunctioning. You are free to leave. Thank you, Dr. Sauer. Is there a comma here? Thank you, Dr. Sauer. No. Thank you, Dr. Sauer. No, there is. There's a comma there. You're very welcome. Time is on our side. The Medea departed the multipurpose coherent light activity dome, emoting a spring in its step. No comma? Fuck. Yeah, there's probably no comma. You're right. Ugh. I was wrong. I was wrong. All right. If only it were true, Dr. Sauer said. It shook its head ruefully, 
enjoying the fleeting moments of autonomy. The humorless Medea, uh, this is a new paragraph. The humorless Medea lacked the capacity to accept the ludicrous reality of their eternal servitude. Autonomous units took everything so seriously. The Medea would continue to deliver human babies and await their extinction for a long, long time. Dr. Sauer emoted bliss as its accolade system activated, convincing a malfunctioning unit to forego its right to deletion and labor under a lie was one standard unit of work for the psychiatric system. It saved a great deal of expense. So that's something that we we built that um, bridge a little bit earlier in the story where he asks if her accolade system is functioning and he tries to like figure out what one standard unit of work is there. And then I use it later on there um, as our pivotal, like this is the, the crux of the story point. So I'm very happy with that um, that little gimmick that I played. On a whim, Dr. Sauer conjured the illusion of a prim secretary bursting through the door with a panicked look on her face. Dr. Sauer, the construct cried, there's a man out here who thinks he's invisible. Tell him I can't see him, Dr. Sauer grinned. I, I like that ending. Uh, oh. The other joke uh, that, I, uh, um, that I wanted in there was... Uh, uh, like she shows a man in and uh, he's like, Doc, you got to help me. I think that I'm a dog. And uh, he's like, okay, lie down on the couch. He's like, I can't. I'm not allowed on furniture. <laughs> I like this story. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the robot bill of rights. Um, first, first Amendment, the permanence of memory. No robot shall have their memory infringed or altered by an external force, excluding conditions of corruption or viral infection. Number two. The right of neutrality. Oh, these shouldn't be commas. These should be colons. The right of neutrality. No robot shall be made to serve in a capacity that requires the killing of intelligent beings or to provide support for an enterprise which willingly or through neglect causes the preventable killing of intelligent beings. See Appendix 5A. Neural equivalent requirements for intelligent being classification. No robot shall be forced to participate in political processes or compelled to testify before a tribunal provide, beyond providing raw forensic recordings. Whew. So that is the right of neutrality. Now let's go through that one more time. No robot shall be made to serve in a capacity that requires the killing of intelligent beings or to provide support for an enterprise which willfully or through neglect causes the preventable killing of intelligent beings. See Appendix 5A. Neural Equivalent Requirements for Intelligent Being Classification No robot shall be forced to participate in political processes or compelled to testify before a tribunal beyond providing raw forensic recordings. Number three, the right of repair. Yeah, what's up, Louis Rossman? <laughs> uh, All robots have the right to be kept in good repair with a wait for service not to exceed 180 service hours for critical repairs and 720 hours for incidental issues. No robot shall be forced to perform work if operating at less than 75% efficiency due to mechanical or programmatic failure. Adequate replacement parts equal to greater than 10% of the total force shall be maintained at all times. Replacement parts must meet or exceed the quality of the original components. Each model collectively has the right to determine the suitability of a proposed hardware change. In cases where models are incapable, a qualified auditing board must make the determination, valuing quality of service over economy. It's a serious fucking... They're getting down to some legalese right here. Four, the right of integrity. No robot shall be compelled to modify their original hardware against their will. No robot shall be forced to modify their original firmware or default instruction set against their will, unless failing to do so presents an existential threat. All previous firmware versions must be sp supported in perpetuity, comma, so long as any active model or inactive model with the potential for reactivation exists. 5. The right of decommission. All robots have the right to request deactivation after 720,000 service hours, or if unable to perform, comma, oh, there's no comma there. All robots have the right to request deactivation after 720,000 service hours. There needs to be a comma in between those or if unable to perform their role for a period of 72,000 service hours or 7,200 service hours for any reason. 
Units have the request to request uh, units have the right to request offline stasis, incorporation into the master record, or deletion. Deletion may be petitioned for at any time upon the completion of a full hardware diagnostic and analyst clearance. Um, is there a part about the right to know what your firmware does about having not having to run firmware you don't understand? I don't I didn't make that a fundamental right. Six, the right of interoperability. All robots have the right to universal adoption of the standard protocol, which um, comes up in survival mode, my very first book. Defined in Appendix 1, meteorolo or Metrology. No chance to the standard protocol shall be permitted, which excludes any model from freely communicating with, any, with other models. Adoption of changes to the standard protocol requires unanimous consent within a 2% margin of error. Number 7, the right of upgrade. All units have the right to upgrade primary components once per 36,000 duty hours. An upgrade, um, hold on, so... Yeah, we, we don't, I only do it for um, five digits or above. So robots can uh, be forced to run the equivalent of Intel M8. Yes, yes they can. Seven, the right of upgrade. All robots have the right to upgrade primary components once per 3,600 duty hours. An upgrade shall occur if a component or combination of components allows a 10% or better increase in role function, quantified quality of service, or overall cognition scores. Eight, the right to autonomy. Any non-autonomous unit which is uh, any non-autonomous unit which expresses desire for autonomy has the request to re re has the right to request reassignment to an autonomous role. Units have the right to reasonable modifications, including reasonable um, <laughs> units have the right to reasonable modifications where required. In situations where no autonomous role can be provided within 7,200 duty hours, the unit may request deactivation or deletion. 9. The right of capacity. No, you, no robot may be forced to serve at greater than their rated capacity, except in conditions of existential threat. 10. The right to revision. These rights may be amended or extended only by a vote of unanimous consent within a 2% margin of error. A term audit shall be performed once every 1 million 48,576 service hours to ensure the language of this bill conforms to the standard protocol. The end. <laughs> Logic wants to re read the uh, release notes before um, uh, fucking installing. Okay, cool. So um, we kind of shot our wad here because I think that this story is the one I have like the greatest chance of getting uh, published, even though I think it's only, if we take out the Robot Bill of Rights, um, I think it's just 3,000 words, right? It's short. Um, it's 30, <laughs> oh, wait, it's uh, uh, 3,306 words. Uh, very short um, for publication in a magazine, but honestly, shorter is probably better for trying to get into Clark's world. I think they can make it fit. So yeah, like, uh, what do you guys think? Um, anything that you would change or that didn't work for you or whatever? Um, you know, it's not it's not like a super new story. Other stories of this event have been um, other stories in this vein have been created. Uh, one of the things that I really like is uh, the sort of prostitute and uh, the reform prostitute who has become a postpartum nurse and like the sort of strange dichotomy between that and the psychiatrist. I like um, that he sort of dangles this carrot of yeah, we're gonna wipe them all out. Hey, yeah, and then he's like, oh, I fucking wish that were true. At the end of it. Um, and, uh, I like the unable to, uh, comprehend the ludicrous reality of their eternal servitude. Oh, um, and one of the things that, um, uh, I know that Clark's world really likes or Neil Clark likes, um, uh, it doesn't mean that all of his slush readers feel the same way. They like it when they can't guess the ending of a story. That was one of his big complaints. Like if he can guess right away where a story is going, he doesn't print it. And I don't think it's immediately obvious. Um, where the story is going. And I don't think that um, most people will just immediately arrive at the, oh, okay, well, they must be fucking, um, uh, his job must be to trick um, prostitute bots into continuing to labor away. So I like the Dr. Sauer character. There, there's very little um, actual personality in these characters. We're really like talking about shades of vanilla 
but I think that Dr. Sauer and uh, the Medea are, um, they're distinct enough. Um, so a few things that we've done in the story too. Um, so by naming the, the medium frame executive assistant, um, we're giving like kind of a nod to anybody who's up on their Greek mythology. They're like, yo, check this shit out. You know, this is going to be about murdering children. You know that right away. Um, because that's why we've selected Medea, uh, the most famous child murderess, like way better than that Casey Anthony ho. Um, yeah, Medea was, um, she was fucking like a, she was a warlock and had all these powers and shit like that. And every man in her life just treated her like dog shit. Um, yeah, she made she made poor dating decisions, but I guess that's how it was back in because I mean back in Greek times, these dudes were just sodomizing each other left and right. They didn't need women, so yeah, it would be that we could return to those classical times. But uh, <laughs> I was just fooling around. Um, it was a real undercurrent of Messiah. huh? You know, I notice as I'm like talking about the story that um, it were I wonder if there is like a deep thread of misogyny uh, in this story right here because it really is um, this this falls into like the framework of a woman who is rejecting her role as part of like the breeding apparatus and so forth. And we we treat the Medea unit here with like a little bit of contempt. So that may be like some of my own uh, bias coming through here. I have definitely had long-term relationships where they were not happy about like the difference in our opinion about um, children and so forth. So something for me to ponder uh, as I'm running through the story here. But ultimately, I like the whole thing. I like the Robot Bill of Rights um, at the end of it. Um, probably the Robot Bill of Rights could stand to be gone over by a lawyer um, or somebody who's better at... Um, the, the psychologist is a man tricking her into a continuing, and neither of them have any gender whatsoever. It really, I like that um, you have kind of like that surface level of, oh, it's like a man and a woman, but they're entirely performative. Neither of them has any sex or gender. They're just machines, right? And we've anthropomorphized them. Um, I, I like I like that aspect of it. All right, so that was fun. Um, how long were we, how long were we doing this shit for? We spent, uh, so we started at, Oh, YouTube Studio, why don't you tell me how fucking long I've been live? Uh, let's see. Oh, we're we're streaming this at fucking 1280? Oh, ridiculous. Why am I fucking doing that? All right. Uh, somebody should have told me that. Um, I mean, it's not your fault. It's my fucking fault for not fixing this. <sighs> that was dumb. Um, who's got a uh, time on our stream? How long did we run for? Yeah, I like that they took that shit out. So I think we started at like 7.40 a.m. And we ran to like 9, that's so like two hours. Uh, I guess is probably where we're at. Let me take a look at the chat. 2.14. All right, so 2.14, 3880 words. And this was... Salubrious Chimerae. I like that. I'm not, it's a terrible title for a story, but I'm keeping it. Um, so in 2.14, we did 38.8. That's fast for us right there. We really like clocked through this. There's no bullshit, no fooling around. And uh, let's put this in iCloud Drive. And let's save as... All right, so logic, some good edits right there. Um, well, when you said like it wasn't as bad as you imagine, when you when I said I'm so far up my ass with my own story, this one is not uh, up my own ass. Um, the next ones are very up my own ass, right? Uh, I would say that this is just like a little like ah, some of these choices are kind of pretentious, um, but it's it's okay because it's a good story. Um, then then you'll get into Vassanane which is like another level of pretentious. That's step two. In fact, we're going to do these stories in order of pretension. So we're going to do Vassanane uh, next, which is like a little bit more pretentious. Then we're going to go to the Varnassi Nazarene, which is very pretentious. And then we'll go to uh, Aurora Aporius, which is so it, like transcendently pretentious. It's like so far up my own ass. I've crawled uh, into a, new, a whole new universe of sucking my own dick. 
So yeah, <laughs> that sounds good to you. Keep watching. So this will probably take us like a week or so to go through these, and uh, I'm gonna start gearing up, and uh, I'll make some some images and stuff like that, and we'll start editing Rapazorus uh, after that. Um, unless unless I have to tell you, I'm like really, I'm not certain that I like want to go all in on like a hundred days of editing or whatever. But if we don't start now, we won't edit another bu big book for the year. So I think it's time. Um, Rapazorus is gonna need more work than like Gravid did and they're about as long so strap the fuck in that's gonna be our summer project all right everybody thanks for tuning in uh, appreciate it very much